Welcome to another exciting episode of the Epic Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm Brad Sugars, the Chairman and CEO of Action Coach, and today we're diving into the minds of some incredible business leaders, uncovering their real stories, strategies, and the secrets behind their victories. It's not just about success, it's about the journey, the hurdles, and turning challenges into opportunities. So let's jump right into it. Yes, Brie Paul, um, CEO of Guyana Ports. Um, uh, let me start off with what are your top three things that made you a that made you successful in business, and how can others follow in your footsteps? So, thank you, um, Arthur, for having me on here. Um, three things that made me really successful as a business owner. Uh, first of all, it's got to go with, I have to go with uh, grit and determination. Um, you definitely have to have that determination um, in, in, in in wanting to uh, achieve your goals. Uh, I, I think it's a very big skill set that most business owners have to acquire. Uh, it's not something that you can, you can, um, you're born with. Uh, it's definitely something that has to be developed um so making sure that you can stick to commitments timelines getting things done within a short deadline and even operating in that square box that you're in uh under immense pressure and still getting those timelines done so determination and, and getting those getting uh, go your goals achieved is one the second would be you must have a vision you must have a vision to know where you want to go whether that vision is within six months or a year. Um, ultimately speaking, when I started my business, all I had a vision was for one year. Now I have a 30 year vision of what my company should look like. So it, it's, it's, it doesn't debar you from thinking very far on in the early stages, but as you develop your business, your, your vision uh, grows uh, over, over a longer period of time and you have a much, much more clarity. Um, this, the third thing that made me really su successful uh, is, and still is, um, my relationship and the work that I would have done to develop the relationship with the people that work within our business. Um, and that has a lot to do with uh, becoming emotionally elevated in understanding human intelligence. Um, and if I were to say that you know, people uh, uh, to, to to follow. Uh, I think the, the 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 sequence should be vision first, determination second, and then having to build those relationships. Because uh, whether it be relationships with your clients, relationships with your team, uh, relationships with other stakeholders that have some positive effect within uh, that that uh, um, ecosystem, uh, it's important to to be able to have that relationship building and the intelligence to to really uh, set well in in decision making with 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 the multiple people that you're in contact with so yeah okay thank you uh pretty paul it's uh, very interesting uh, you mentioned that you know nobody is born with that grit and determination uh, luckily so we all have a chance to learn those skills uh, was it uh, easy or was it difficult to build upon those skills um, I, I particularly believe it's easy once you challenge yourself. Um, it's, you know, there's a really interesting uh, movie uh, where a coach put a blindfold on a, a, an American footballer's um, uh, face and he, he told him you can get to the halfway mark. And it's just keeping, keeping in your mind, how do you get to 50 yards or 60 yards? By the time he took the blindfold off, he was on the other side of the football field. Yeah. It, it's all perspective. Um, what, whatever you tell yourself, uh, you will achieve. You most likely will achieve it. But if you keep adjusting to negative connotation, you're going to get negative feedback. So keep applying the positivity in the words you use and the actions you portray and in the things you do you will get positive um, uh, results. So, yeah, yeah, I think it, uh, maybe it was Henry Ford that said, whether you believe you ca can or you can't, both times you're right. So, yeah. um, <laughs> um, okay, um, 
back to the beginning, what made you decide to get into this business? Yeah, so um, at the age of 16, um, I left. I was I was finished with high school, and I started out working with my dad in a, in the seafood export business. So we had our own vessels and and we were processing equipment, ah, shrimp, sorry, and, and fish. Um, and, <clears throat> you know, I worked with my dad for about 11 years and I saw a really distinct opportunity to get into the maritime business where we we're right now repairing vessels. Um, and I said to myself, I, I would like to be someone that, yes, I do come from a wealthy background, but I also want to um, earn my stripes as well. Uh, so I thought it would be a really good opportunity with what's taking place in Guyana right now and, and everything else um, to jump on that bandwagon. Um, what we did was to, to, to be able to leverage the asset that we have, which is the dry dock. And we were able to get our first client uh, starting with zero revenue. And now we're a really successful business. And um, it, yeah, it's just just been a really wild ride but i've enjoyed every second of it okay uh how, how long by the way how long uh, have you had uh, how long ago did you start the business yeah we so we started in the middle of COVID, um uh, oh, 2021 perfect timing yeah yeah, yeah you can't get any better than that yeah so <laughs> we started in uh in 2021 of february um and i think fortunately for us the way we started it was pretty much in a, a skeletal way um, so we didn't have a, a really built out team, uh, which helped um, in, in from an overhead perspective. Um, uh, but it, we we really built on 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 just the 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 different clients that we had and started moving stride to stride. And then in 2022, we saw a really huge increase in revenue um, by four or five hundred percent. So okay. that really got us going and started to cement ourselves in in, in who we are today. Okay, so did you, uh, if I hear you started uh, right after high school, you uh, joined the, your father's business in, in more in seafood processing and that kind of stuff. Um, so you didn't have any actually technical expertise in, in, in ship repair. Uh, did I hear this correctly that you yeah. started this business without having uh, the technical uh, know-how in the industry? That, that's correct. Um, um, I, I I was aware of what the processes were. Okay. You, you know, welding. You know, fabrication. You know, abrasive blasting. Um, what I just did um, was I had the brain for a business. I knew that uh, for me to get the the outcome, which is the, the repaired vessel or, or the, the vessel that needed to be repaired, uh, I knew what it had to look like, and. I, I was able to surround myself with people that had experience in the business and I really worked with them. Um, so at the, obviously in the starting, in any business, as you would know, you are the, the painter, the carpenter, the, the finance guy, the project management guy, you're everything. Yeah. You're even the guy that pays the money at the end of the week to the, to the people that are doing the work. Yeah. So um, that really gave me a, a huge appreciation. That's something that I would have done even in my father's business. Um, you need to know your business inside out um, to really grow it um, into you know what what you believe it to be. So, um, not even not even though I had some experience, it it was you know a really a on the job type of training. Okay, um, and starting out, uh, besides the fact that it was in the middle of COVID, uh, what would you say uh, in the beginning what was your toughest challenge uh, to, and how did you overcome uh, that particular challenge? Yeah, I think the toughest challenge for for me was how was I going to get my first client because I had no clue in the world about what to do, where to go find these people. Uh, all I remembered, I, I was actually visiting a, a client that wanted to do their their docking um, of their a vessel, but they kept postponing. And I remember this guy; he was, you know, just let me know when your dock is up. And I came out. I left this client's office, and he was like, you know, another two weeks. So I decided, let me call this guy and see uh, if he's available. His name is Albert, by the way. Shout out to Albert. And um, <clears throat> he's like. Uh, uh, I told him, you know, is your vessel still in need of repairs? He's like, yes. 
Um, I'm like, when do you want it to, to be repaired? He's like, uh, could you do it tomorrow? I'm like, uh, yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> like, like every entrepreneur, we, we figure yeah. out, all right, we'll book yeah. the vessel. Yes. And then we figure out how later. Then we fi figure, figure it out later. So yeah. that's what, that's what happened. And, um, I think that was the toughest challenge for us. Um, going through COVID was also quite, uh, it was a, a very slow process. Um, but what we stuck towards was it's just managing day by day um, uh, and, and building on it and building on it. And, you know, within the first year, maybe year and a half, we had maybe two or three people in the office. And at that time, it was a container office. Um, now we have a, a strong administrative team of about 26. Okay, wow. Well, so, very nice. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, how did you personally have to grow? Or uh, what did you most of all have to learn to create uh, the success in your business? Um, well, the first part that I mentioned was you ought, to, you ought to know as a business owner, you ought to know your business. Um, you have to fundamentally know every single thing that there is. Um, you don't necessarily need to know it to every minute detail. But enough to make sense that um, you can make decisions off of. Um, the second part was I did not realize how how important learning was as part of 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 of, of being a business owner. Most times, at least in Guyana, for all I know, uh, business owners are the end all and know all of every situation. So. Um, having a deeper appreciation of learning continuously was something that I did not realize that I needed. Uh, even though I, I actually love learning, um, that I think was is, is fundamentally what I believe made that 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 process so easy. Uh, so the continuous learning um, is what you know adds value to obviously any business owner once they sign on to that process. If I can have a follow-up on that, is there one particular area that you had to uh, grow more or or learn more about to to become uh, uh, the business owners that the business owner that you've become. Yeah, so I would say the the one thing I mean fundamentally, especially working you know working with Action Coach, um, there is definitely the the management perspective, the sales perspective, having a different overview of how you should look at your business. What really topped it all off for me was understanding human intelligence. Um, that made a huge difference because it allowed me to look at everything uh, from an empathetic perspective, understanding what other people uh, feel, but not necessarily feel what they feel. Uh, so obviously knowing the difference between sympathy and empathy. Yeah. But then also using that as a business owner to help build your team, because most cases as a leader in business, you always think that your, your job is to come in, sign the checks and then leave or tell someone to do this, that, and the other. It's now for me, what I realize is, you know, where, 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 where is it that I want to have my team? Because I think, uh, which I, the, the definition that I love for, for business that uh, Brad talks about is a, a, a profitable enterprise that works without you, right? right. And, and if it works without me, it means that I'm creating more opportunities for other people to grow within my business. Right. And if we're going to move, Arthur, from uh, from from a project management perspective, to getting him to be the CEO of the company, what is the cap analysis that we need to do to get him to build? Yeah. So fundamentally, understanding that process really took took it to a different level. So that that that's what I I, I believe you know is something that add, adds major value apart from just the 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 fundamentals behind business. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's look at uh, the business coaching side uh, for a minute. Uh, as you mentioned, you've been uh, working with Action Coach in Guyana, and in, in this case, uh, Vishnu Durga, Coach Vishnu. Um, why did you decide to get a coach? How 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 did that happen for you? Yeah, so it's quite strange. Again, um, it's about uh, I think this is 2020, <clears throat> 2022. Um, he messages me. Uh, well, I knew of him, um, and a lot of people keep telling me about Vishnu as, as, as coach, and you know he does this thing, and 
but I never really sought out to find find out what it was. Mm-hmm. So he messages me about a vessel that uh, has to be dry docked for a company that he he represents. Um, and I was he was I, I asked him a few questions and about the boat. So I was like, you know, what is the size, etc. And he gave me whatever I needed, and I said, okay, so let's put that aside now. What is it? This what? Tell me about this thing that you actually do, <laughs> because uh, I, I keep hearing it from everyone. But it it is um it is it is it is quite interesting to to hear from you. Like what what is it that you do? So he says, uh, you know, um, do we do business coaching and executive coaching and training? And we had he, he scheduled a two hour consult. I'm like, yeah, I have nothing to lose. Might as well go to this. And um, in those two hours, I, I, I literally, and you can ask him yourself, where were you for the past five years of my life? <laughs> that was exactly what I told him when I left his office, because it was like, uh, it was so refreshing to really understand, well, maybe I can look at business differently. Maybe I can, because well, again, it, it comes back to the to the definition of, running a successful enterprise that works without you. That's what really got me, right? I really, you really don't want to work in your business. You want to work on your business, as Brad said. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and and, and then the rest is history. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, final question. Uh, what top piece of advice uh, would you give to another entrepreneur such as yourself? Um, well, I think... The first thing that uh, another entrepreneur like myself would want, what you know, would would need to hear is find something that you love doing. Um, and once you love doing it, then um, the passion is definitely there. Uh, once the passion is definitely there, then you can add the pieces. Because um, ultimately speaking, learning how to create a vision and the way you can see it, um, for at least for me. When when I see my vision, I can literally see see the pictures in my mind uh, of what my business looks like, the amount of people it has, um, the 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 benefits that we create, uh, the opportunities that we create uh, for for the people that come in contact with us, and and by being able to do that, it allows you as an entrepreneur to really drive the process because money becomes another object um, that you get the benefit of, of 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 having but there's only so much that one can create when it comes to money um you can spend all as you want uh wisely or or not wise at all and you, you know you, you you sit and ask yourself so what am i doing this for and 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 then you then realize i need to have that vision so i think ultimately you can you can figure out everything else, but having the vision and 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 and, and focusing on that uh, with with a very high level of clarity um, really gives you uh, a sense of belonging with what you're creating. So I think that would be the best advice that I can give any other entrepreneur. If you know what you're doing, create a vision and then refine that vision because it's never it's never done. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think Matthew McConaughey said it really well in an Oscar speech. Is, you every time he, he sets a goal for him to to be himself, what in what he needs to be himself in in ten years, and when you get to that point, you go ten years more and then ten years more because you never are able you're never able to catch yourself in ten years. Okay. By the time you get there, so it's it's how you refine it, how you want to make it look, and then once you create that sense of of belonging to that vision, you just drive it forward. Okay. Uh, well, pretty Paul, thank you very much for your time and sharing uh, your wonderful experiences with us here so that we could share it with uh, existing or perhaps young and starting entrepreneurs so that they can uh, build be- better businesses and, you know, uh, have uh, a world abundance because that's uh, what we at Action Coach uh, here are all about. Once again, thank you very much and look forward to seeing you whether it's in Guyana or maybe Las Vegas with the regional conference. Absolutely. A pleasure. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you. And that's a wrap for today's epic conversation here on Epic Entrepreneurs. Huge thanks to our amazing guests for their pouring their heart into sharing their journey. 
If you enjoyed this episode, hit that subscribe button, leave a review, share it or hit that bell. But until next time, let's make sure you keep dreaming, take massive action and stay epic. <laughs>